Good morning. Howdy. How's everybody Perfect. doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You've been busy, busy, busy opening up all of those businesses, showing your beautiful face all over the place. Yay. You and my mama maybe share that one sentiment, but everybody else I don't know about, but thank you. <laughs> it has been a crazy couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, wow. you've been busy. All right, let's see. We got a couple of people logging in right quick, but we're going, it is nine o'clock. So we're going mosey on. He hope everybody had a good week. It has been it's been hectic. I, I'm gonna tell you, it feels like it's been like two weeks since we were just here seven days ago. But uh, glad to see y'all with us. All right, let's hit some news and then I'll open it up. Um, so I do have a couple of questions for some of y'all in here. All right. Um, all right, some bad news to start off. I hate to do this, but uh, we're going to be in a roller coaster day today on the stock market. Oil prices spiked about 10% last night. Uh, just for those that are paying attention because they can't work out a ceasefire. So because of the talks breaking down in uh, Ukraine, we're going to see gas prices actually dropped a good amount over the last 10 days, oil prices per barrel. But anyway, that's going to go back up. Feds finally in uh, the most anticlimactic fashion ever, raised the rates yesterday a uh, quarter of a point, which I was shocked. I really thought it was going to be uh, half a point, but uh, whatever. 25% um, point, which really for those credit card rates are going up, uh, loan rates are going up if you don't have a fix. But uh, first time in a long time that housing mortgage rates have gone over 4%, which is, uh, which is interesting. So. Um, Crazy enough, though, the inflation, you know, we, we've talked about this forever. I mean, for the last month, I guess. But somebody wrote it in a different way this week. And so this is the highest. And we talked about this highest in 40 years. But really, for those under 40 years of age, they don't have a clue what inflation will do to prices. And so because uh, this is the highest they've ever seen it. So what was somebody was paying 12 bucks in a restaurant, maybe paying $18 now. Um, it's going to continue to hit. And I think the realization that this is not a short term issue is, is settling in. So anyway, let's we'll see what the market holds for today, uh, which is the S&P had one of its biggest days yesterday. I don't, if somebody can explain it to me in the Cliff Notes version, I would appreciate it. But anyway, um, all right, let's talk South Carolina because there are a few of you I see on here that have been tracking state politics forever, like me. And uh, so this was budget week this week on the House floor, which usually it takes a couple of days of just long hours and just it's pretty mundane. A few sparks every now and then. Well, this one was anticlimactic as anything. It lasted one day. They came in Monday and they finished the budget, the largest budget in the history of South Carolina, $13.9 billion. They did it with about three hours of debate. So I have to amend. I, I usually, there's the biggest arguments usually at the state house when there's no money. I mean, when there's a lot of money and there's usually no questions asked or there's nothing when there's no money because Anyway, so this is throwing the deck of cards all up in the air because they've completed 13.9 billion debate in one day. But the good news is we state employees going, if the House budget passes, okay, it's got to go to the Senate now, but they got teacher pay raises in there, law enforcement pay raises. They held tuition uh, freeze for the next year for uh, colleges, which is great. Ted, they gave you a little bit of money to, to repave, repave some roads, uh, fix some bridges. Some rural counties or the uh, local governments got some money to fix their roads. So that was pretty good. Do you, Ted, do you know what, did y'all get everything you asked for? Well, um, I would I say we, uh, yeah, 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 sure. We, I, I think breakdown. we did. We, yeah, we, 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 we did. We had uh, requested um, uh, the most important thing uh, from our perspective was um, 
uh, between 100 and, a, and 200 million uh, in recurring revenue. Uh, that would be additional state dollars to allow us to match and pull down the additional federal dollars from the uh, new um, federal infrastructure uh, a law. Um, if we don't have additional state money to match, then we can't pull down the additional federal money unless we draw from state money from our existing programs to repave and resurface roads and build, rebuild bridges, et cetera. So uh, the House did appropriate $120 million for the uh, for the recurring state match um, and then provided, I think, $250 million for county transportation committees. Uh, all 46 counties uh, receive uh, an annual uh, amount through DOT uh, by formula, uh, but this is an additional one-time $250 million that would allow the counties to uh, to go after uh, road projects that they would prioritize in their in their local communities. Very often, they would be widening projects to uh, deal with uh, greater congestion in in perhaps mostly the urban areas. But yeah, all counties will be getting would we will be getting some through the CTC uh, allotment. Awesome! Thanks for that update. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good stuff. By the way, I did travel last weekend on. Uh, 26 and 95, and I may have uttered a few expletives along the way. <sighs> that can't come soon enough, Ted. We so, talked about that, but th that money was in there, yeah. right? Well, so so that is, and I'm I'm sorry to you know kind of take a couple of minutes, but no. the the the, the mo monies that would accelerate the uh, our work to widen I-26 between Columbia and Charleston from four lanes to six lanes and to accelerate a portion of I-95 widening and improvement from the Georgia border, um, those, those monies were actually appropriated through the American Rescue Plan Act, a separate bill. So that's $453 million uh, in the House uh, version of that bill and the same exact for SEDOT in the Senate version of the bill. The two bills differ on other appropriations. Therefore, those bills have to they have to go to conference on those bills. That's a separate thing. But okay. but yes, that that's in the process. That's in the process. White knuckles, teeth grinding. Mother would not be happy with me, but they, it was even on a Monday in uh, in March. Traffic was crazy. So anyway, uh, enough editorializing about. Rose, but thank you, Ted, for the update. Glad y'all are getting that money. Um, the other big news, and we we talked about this a little bit, but the chain, the politics, we're in that crazy purgatory time right now between first part of session. Now the House of Representatives and all of the constitutional officers, statewide officers are up for election this year. So there's filing. And the big news this week was Jay Lucas, uh, Speaker of the House, is not running. Last week, we talked about Gary Semrel. Uh, the majority leader that had been in for 30 years, he's not running. Now we got about eight or nine more not running. Chip Huggins from Irmo uh, has decided to uh, not run for re-election. So that, that in and of itself is somewhat interesting. Um, some dynamic personalities are leaving uh, or retiring. But uh, anyway, we'll, more to come. Filing closes at the end of this month. So we've got another week or so for everybody to get the, the paperwork in. So we'll see what the final count looks like then. But on local, we still got local elections. We got five uh, members of Richland County Council that are up for the election this year. You've got David Adams uh, announced he's not running again. Our, our Richland County Treasurer has been there 20 years, um, done a great job for that. Um, on council, Paul Livingston, who said he wasn't going to run, did file to run. Uh, uh, Malinowski, uh, Bill Malinowski, longtime member of Richland County Council, last time said he wasn't going to run. He decided to run. Now he decided not to run this time. So he's out. We've got a couple people running for him. Anyway, it, we need a flow chart. I get it. But uh, a lot of, a lot of, musical chairs going on and um, we'll see how that plays out in the next coming weeks um, but on a local more local stuff um, 
interesting. February, I see Kim Fuller with the Realtors on here, but good morning, Kim. Uh, home prices in February in the Midlands were up 19.2% over year over year. That is phenomenal. In fact, 36% over two years, unreal. But we still got realtors are all scrambling right now because it's the lowest inventory, I think, since they started keeping records. So if you can find, if you're looking for a house, good luck. If you're selling one, hope you have a place to go because uh, it is a great time to sell. It's a seller's market only if you have a place to lay ahead. Um, big news, I think we alluded to this last week, but Spectrum Comcast uh, announced 350 jobs over their facility off of Platte Springs Road. 350 jobs is big. I, I mean, to tell you, they, um, they were initially planning 200, but added another 150 to make 200. Average pay, well, start and pay $18 an hour to 36,000 a year, but the um, bonus structure, the average pay is gonna be about $50,000 a year. Um, great company, was even more excited to learn that 10% of their workforce is veterans. So they do a great job, we appreciate them, but I'm really excited to see and share their news on Tuesday. Um, Let's see, other big news, y'all all saw, I mean, local Frank Martin, love Frank, uh, hate to see him leave, done a great job at USC, but time for a change. If y'all follow Twitter, I don't know how Ray Tanner's gonna find a new coach with Twitter out there, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, they were all tweeting from Halls last night that Sean Miller was in town, the former coach of Arizona, so, uh, I'll leave that to the pros, but I'm not tracking that as much, but uh, we'll, we'll have good news there. Bigger news today is what's happened this weekend. And, and I, I can't express enough how important this weekend is to the economy of Columbia. Uh, we are seeing thousands of people flock to downtown Columbia this weekend. We've got uh, first the NCAA tournament, the women's first two rounds are here. We want to welcome those from San Antonio and, and uh, University of South Florida, Tampa folks and Miami folks, Howard University folks all coming to watch their girls play. But I'm, it's rare, but sometimes I do agree with former President Barack Obama. Uh, he picked the Gamecocks to win it all this year. So uh, for the women's, so I'm, I'm agreeing with the former president. I think they're going to go far in this tournament. But uh, there's tickets available, and they're also uh, – it's on our website. But they're um, doing a send-off for the girls today at 11.45, 11.55 down the Marriott downtown. But going, they've got a game at 2 against Howard University. All right. The other big news, uh, after two years, we've got the St. Patty's Day folks – uh, festival back at Five Points, the 40th anniversary of that festival. Uh, fountains green, the beer I'm sure will be green. There will be a lot of green. And go early, enjoy the festivities parade uh, down on Hardin Street, excuse me, Divine Street, like at 10 a.m. There's a, for those that are crazy enough to run, there's a run, y'all already know about that, but uh, it'll be fun. We've got uh, the Blues Travelers playing, local greats like Villanova playing. Uh, anyway, lineups are great. So y'all check it out. But the tax dollars are what I'm more interested in seeing. And uh, I think restaurants are happy. Hotels are happy. Um, so, but do carry some patience because with average, say, 40, 45,000 people coming to town, well, 40, 45,000 come for the, just for the St. Patty's Day. Then you add folks from, for the basketball as well. And, and hospitality folks are short staffed anyway. So uh, y'all pack some patience and uh, go out and enjoy the festivities. The weather should be great. All right. There's so much more to cover. I just hit the highlights because this week is, it's almost been exhausted just trying to keep up with what's going on. Um, what do y'all have this week? Any fun news? Not even fun, anything good.
Well, uh, because I'm a vendor, I'm usually out and about with all of that crowd and I'm excited about it. Um, and I certainly hope that Mayor Rickman will continue to add to the excitement, um, especially with everybody coming off of that pandemic. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do about the customer service. Um, I would love for it to continue to be um, smiling faces, beautiful places, which we're achieving that on a mega level, but the service has to um, perk up. So I'm concerned for those people who are um, in that particular market. But as for me, I bring my top game all the time, ready to serve and enjoying the festivities. So whoop, whoop for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for being here this morning. Yeah. All right. Hey, Adam Vance, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, not exactly Columbia, but yesterday we did a groundbreaking in Florence for Harvest Hope, you know, yes. which is based here in Columbia. And uh, that, was, that was very well attended. And they've got a, a phenomenal facility out there, which maybe hopefully will take some of the weight off of the, the Columbia location, which I've served at uh, a, a good bit, especially during COVID. But Phenomenal facility out there and, and a lot of Columbia people that are involved with, with that. So just a, that's, a, that's a positive and hopefully they'll be operational in about a year. It's just a big empty space. Um, and they've, they've just got to build it out, but a, but, but a phenomenal location for them there. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, thank you. Good. Hey, I, I, I failed to follow up in my previous report, but let me follow back up from last week. Doug Meister from uh, Tyson's asked a question. Doug, I talked to the county, some county officials this week. They are revisiting the mask issue. You know, about a week and a half ago, they uh, extended the mask ordinance for 60 days. Uh, there was a, there was an actual amendment offered on the, during the meeting to do away with the emergency declaration. Well, that would have undone a lot of things other than just masks. And so they did not take, they, they shot that amendment down they are trying to unravel and this is in, so inside baseball i probably should just they're revisiting they just got to figure out how to do it just with the masks but keep the rest of the uh they had a ex officio committee uh, uh form for covid they've got covid funding flowing through that committee they create a structure that's based upon the emergency uh regs to create the committee mass was a part of it they're trying to unravel it okay hopefully at tuesday's county council meeting they will do just that carl first off thanks um <clears throat> interesting that you brought that up because uh, we just got a letter sent to us from our vp and this is really unheard of the uh fsis is going to uh, head towards no mask either because it's low or medium. So uh, until we do, they won't. But that's unheard of that the federal government would uh, take the mask off at lower medium. So good. hopefully for some good news coming out of you this next week. Call me on my cell if you hear something prior. We'll do it. We'll do it. Appreciate sorry, it. Yeah, sorry it took a little bit on that, but uh, they are, they're plotting whatever <laughs> they got to do to uh, fix Richland County. So um, all right. What else we got? Hey, Carl, this is Brent Mackey at First hey, Brent, Alliance. How are you this morning? Good. Great. Hey, we had a, um, uh, a drop in yesterday to kick off March Madness. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you and Henry for coming. Yeah. We had a great event. And I think I saw Craig and Tom also on the call. They were in attendance and had a great time. We probably had about 60 people, had an opportunity to kind of open up our new branch here in the old Bank of America building been totally renovated and had a lot of people show up had a great time i will tell you that we um had people fill out brackets and so we had a small contest and i've got two people that filled out brackets that have uk going all the way to championship so <laughs> talk about a bracket buster right out of the gate don't spend your earnings on that one yeah that, no, sir. Uh, hey and let me tell you uh there was another, there were two major upsets yesterday uh, in basketball. So you, you never know with whoever wins those brackets, it's just luck, right? It's I mean, crazy. there's no other way to describe it. So anyway, y'all's new uh, branch looks awesome. So congratulations. Well, we thank the chamber for its support and we had a great event yesterday and look forward to the rest of the year. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Tom Ledbetter. 
Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. And Brent, your, your, your facility is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. All right. Nice addition to Main Street. Uh, the uh, uh, this coming week on Tuesday, uh, we will graduate uh, out of a 10 week program. This is week 10 of 10, 42 students uh, in our 26 fast track entrepreneur training class that we've done with the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunity. There's 42 students in this class. Wow. They're all existing business owners. Uh, and, you know, and, when, and one of the things I'm extraordinarily proud of over the years is that uh, of the students that come to this class, and this particular class is 42 students, 38 are minority, and 35 of that 38 are female minority. Wow. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's an extraordinary infusion of talent into the Columbia proper for the opportunities for these folks and, and the chamber, the chamber and the city of Columbia, Midlands Tech should be very proud of the legacy of what we've got going on here uh, with this with this program. That's awesome. Congratulations, 42. That's yeah, and starting starting a week from uh, starting the sec uh, the first Friday, uh, Tuesday, the first Tuesday in April, we have a second fast track class going that's sponsored by Richland Library, Midlands Tech the Women's Business Center at Benedict College and OBO, and it's fast track for the female entrepreneur. It's the first of this classification that we've done, and the marketing material is out on the on the uh, Richland Library website right now. Great. All the facilitators, the facilitators are female, participants are female, the subject matter expert speakers are female. And it's going to be it's going to be an extraordinary time. Awesome. Good. Thank you very much, Tom. Anybody else got some news for us today? Hey, uh, Carl, this is Doug again at Tyson. I've got 48 cases of, and maybe people want them, maybe they won't, of hand sanitizer with pumps. And there's four gallon jugs in each case that we're just wanting to give away. And I checked with uh, Harvest Hope over here by the plant, and they're fairly full. But if anybody else does, um, please call me. We'll just give them away. They're gallon jugs with the pumps. Great. Thank you. If y'all need them, especially if you know some nonprofits may need them, good place to do it. Uh, let, you get, Red Cross can use them. All yeah, right. They just need to get a hold of me. We'll get it taken Rebecca, care of. Rebecca, I'll send you uh, yeah. Doug's contact. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Doug. All right. Well, listen, there's plenty to go do on a Friday and th plenty to do most Fridays, but thank y'all for joining us today. Appreciate y'all's partnership with the chamber. I hope y'all have an awesome weekend. Go easy on the green beer. Hey, Nick, I'm talking to you. Go easy on the green beer. Um, have fun, be careful. And uh, for the love of Pete, drive in the right lane if you're driving slow. All right, have a good week. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Bye.